so I wanted to film another video um, because I thought why not get into YouTube while we're in quarantine because we're still stuck in quarantine I'm, I think I'm coming up on two months in quarantine um, and lately I've just been thinking a lot about places I'd rather be because I feel like everyone's doing that um, and I was thinking about my study abroad program last year and um, I started thinking about like like some crazy things that happened to me um, so I thought I could start like a little series or something I don't know on YouTube where I talk about things like mishaps or like fun things that I did whatever like during study abroad um, and it could be like study abroad story times because I talk about my study abroad all the time anyway so I might as well like talk to people who care because all my friends don't care anymore so <laughs> That's what I'm going to be doing today, is just telling a little story time about what happened to me and my roommate on spring break last year, 2019. I'm sorry if you can hear the wind. There's wind outside. It's a very windy day. I don't know why I chose today to do it, but here we are. So I guess we'll just get right into it. But we went to three places for spring break. The first one was Amsterdam. We were there for two days. Um, and that was really fun. I love Amsterdam. We went twice, actually. Um, so we went like the weekend after valentine's day we went and we were there for a day and then we went to bruges belgium and then for spring break we were like let's go back because we were only there for a day so we went back for two days um and then we flew from amsterdam to rome and rome is where the story takes place we were in rome for five days we basically were just sightseeing the whole time we were there but by the last day, we kind of ran out of things to go see because there's only so many things you could do in Rome. I know there's probably a lot more than what we did, but we weren't gonna go out. We weren't like partying or anything. We were just like there to sightsee and like get ingrained in the culture. So the second day, we decided to go to the Trevi Fountain because why not? You're in Rome. It's beautiful. The Trevi Fountain is gorgeous. So we were at the Trevi Fountain. We were there for a little while and we were just like taking pictures, whatever. Oh, we went. So before we went there, we visited the Vatican um, because we were going to go there the next day because we got tickets for the next day. This is also irrelevant to like what actually happened that day. It's just a little backstory about like what we were doing that day. So we took the metro from Termini that morning to whatever the vatican was that was a really long metro i think it took us like 20 minutes um maybe a little bit longer we got on that metro no problems i think we got mcdonald's for lunch and then we went to the vatican saw the vatican had some gelato and we were like cool we'll be back tomorrow and then we left and we went back to the metro station and we took the metro to the trevi fountain so the trevi fountain is just a fountain like you can just walk up we were sitting in this little area that was like on a balcony halfway down the steps and we were looking at the phone and we were trying to take pictures and it just was not it was not working um there were people in the background we were trying to find a way to get down so we could sit along the edge of the um fountain so that we could take pictures so that they would be cute and there would be no one in the pictures and whatever we also both wanted to like throw a coin in the fountain so that was another thing that we wanted to get down there for so we were like standing there for a good while i think it was like a half hour and we were like just waiting for someone to leave and then as soon as we saw someone like right in front of us leave we like ran but the thing is there was like a there was a bar there so we had to like run all the way to the middle where the stairs actually were and then around the bar and down and then back to where we were so we actually somehow miraculously got this spot. I think it was actually like someone took it right before us, but then as soon as they left, we just like darted right in. Um, so we took a decent amount of pictures. I threw a coin in the fountain for my grandfather and then we were like, okay, we're, we're good. We don't need pictures anymore. Like, do you wanna go back? And I was like, hold on. I think there's like a gelato place around here somewhere. Not quite sure where, but we can find it. And she was like, yeah, like that's fine. I don't really care. So we went to the gelato place and we both got a gelato. It was actually really cute. I'll like insert a picture right here if I have one. So we got our gelato and then we decided to, cause it was kind of chilly. So we didn't want to like stay outside. So we went um, to the back. They had stools and they had like a little bar along the wall. And then there was a bathroom like down, down the way. So 
we were sitting eating gelato whatever and then Casey finished hers and she was like I'm gonna run to the bathroom and I was like cool so I was sitting there I was watching her phone and her wallet and her just like whole purse she left it with me um because she didn't want to take it into the bathroom with her so I was watching it the whole time because I don't trust people and also there's mad pickpockets in Rome it freaked me out so much just like the thought of someone like touching my stuff I was like I can't I cannot do it so because I was so afraid of the pickpockets I wore this like I have this thing I don't have it with me it's like a flat fanny pack that you can put you like clip it on and then you put it under the waistband of your pants or like just like under your shirt and um it like hides all your stuff from pickpockets so i was like cool i have this and i wore it even in amsterdam i was wearing a plaid dress with a t-shirt underneath and so i couldn't exactly put the fanny pack in my waistband so i had it like strapped across my body so that i could just like unbutton it and then like pull out whatever i needed whenever i needed it i had my wallet in there and i think i had a little bit of cash i'm not entirely sure but you can like see it in the pictures that i was taking and i was like i don't really care if people can see it because no one no one's gonna touch this area of me and i'm not gonna notice you know i also had a backpack it was like a little black backpack but all i had in the backpack was a sweater and i think a fanta i also had casey's polaroid in there so i had like three things in there and one of them was of value but i had the polaroid underneath the sweaters and i had like the drink on top i was like prepared i was like i am not getting pickpocketed this is absolutely not happening today so casey had this across the shoulder bag and it had like a zip it was like a small purse she had a bunch of stuff in there but she had her wallet and her passport were like the two things of value i was making sure i was watching all of her stuff it was all on the table right in front of me i had my hand on top of it i was like no one is touching this stuff without me knowing and i was on my phone but i was like paying attention so she comes back from the bathroom and she was like all right you ready to go i was like yep let's go i think it was about a five to ten minute walk back from the trevi fountain to the metro station that we were going to take the metro from to termini and it was two stops so we get there and the platform was absolutely packed like we noticed it when we were coming down we were like there's a lot of people like coming down here it wasn't weird it was like just like rush hour i guess i don't know we were sitting on the platform and we were waiting for the train to come up the train comes up and it's absolutely packed and i was like i don't i don't know about that like i was really nervous because i didn't want to get pickpocketed and i know that they target like really packed trains we were on the platform i was like watch all your stuff like we're like there's so many people around and like we were kind of like watching each other and we were also on our phones because we were trying to figure out like when the next train was going to come because we were trying to decide whether or not we wanted to take this train or just wait so i looked it up and it was like two minutes and i was like do you want to just wait for the next one like i really don't feel comfortable getting on this one it's like super packed whatever and she was like yeah so we waited on the platform for two minutes three minutes and the next train pulls up and the platform was like empty by the time the first train left and then by the time the second train left there were the same amount of people and i was like this is just gonna be a terrible experience like i can already tell something is gonna go bad so i looked at casey and i was like casey do you want to get on this one or do you want to just walk and we looked up how long it would take to walk before and she was like it's just like a really long walk i think it was like 45 minutes back to our hostel and she was like i'm willing to like risk it like it's let's just get on the train like it's two stops like it won't it, nothing will happen so we get on the train so the dress that i was wearing has pockets and it's just like little square pockets in the front like nothing goes over them so you can like easily get your hand in so i had my phone in my hand in my pocket and then everything else was across my body so i was holding onto the pole with my other hand and i had my phone in like a death grip in my pocket i was like no one is taking this from me absolutely not and i looked at casey and she seemed to be okay someone kind of like snuck between us and i was like all right like whatever um but i looked over and she was like fine she told me like how she was like holding on to all of her stuff so basically she was she had her 
phone in her hand and her sunglasses in her hand. And then she was holding onto the pole with her other hand and her bag was across her body, but she didn't have it like in front of her. She just had it like to the side. So we get off the train and Casey is like kind of standing in the doorway of the train and not really like she's like kind of like looking around like something weird was going on and she didn't really tell me what happened and then she looks in her bag as i was like walking away she was like still kind of there and i was like hey like let's just like move away from the train she was like hold on hold on and she like opened her thing and she was like my wallet's gone and i was like what like are you kidding me and she was like my wallet is gone she literally turned around and she was like i need to go again i'm like i'm gonna beat this guy up i was like casey if it's gone it's gone like you're not gonna find the guy you didn't see him it's just gone like there's nothing we can do and it took me a couple seconds to like chill her out and i started walking towards the wall so we could like figure stuff out like farther away from the platform and i turned around and she was like your bag's open he went through your bag too and i was like Okay, well, I have nothing of value in there. I'm gonna check and make sure your Polaroid's still there, but like, that's the only thing in my bag that I really like care about because it, obviously it's not mine and it's kind of expensive. It's like 80 bucks. So I looked in, the Polaroid was still there. My sweater was still there. So I still had all of my stuff because I had it strapped to me. I had my phone in my hand. My bag was open, but there was nothing in there. Um, I think the guy just probably unzipped it, reached in and was like, there's nothing in here. And I was like, okay, let's just, try and figure this out how much money did you have in your wallet and she said i had 200 euros in there like upwards of 200 euros i was like okay that's a lot of money but it's just money do you still have your passport because that if she didn't have her passport we wouldn't have been able to go to barcelona and we also wouldn't have been able to get back to london i think if you get your passport stolen it takes about two weeks to get it especially if you're in another country it takes a while so she was freaking out because obviously she didn't have her wallet um but she still had her passport which was good so that was fine i was like okay as long as you have your passport we'll call your mom we'll figure things out it'll be okay so we go upstairs and i at this point was like shaking like i was so upset and uncomfortable so we go upstairs um, and there was a pharmacy up around the corner from like the exit. So I was like, okay, let's just go in here and we'll call your mom because we're off the street, like whatever. Um, and we just asked the people, we were like, are, are you okay if we just like make a phone call here? And they were like, yeah, like totally fine, whatever. <laughs> so we stood in the corner of this pharmacy and um, she was calling her mom. I think she was on the phone with her mom for, I want to say like 40 minutes. Like it was a really long time. And so I called my mom because I was like, hey, I only have X amount of money left in my account, but Casey just got her wallet stolen and she has no money. She has no cards, no money, nothing. Um, and my mom was like, yeah, like how much do you think she'll need for the rest of the trip? Like I'll put the extra in, you can just pay for her. Sorry the angle changed, my camera died. Um, so this is what the rest of the video is gonna look like. I don't know if this is, I'm not entirely sure if this is exactly what it looked like before. So she finished her phone call with her mom and she was really upset, but there was really nothing we could do at this point. So we went back to the hostel, we went back to the room and then I remembered that my friend Nensa, who was also studying with us in London, I went to Portugal with her and she was having problems with their cards. So her mom or her sister, I forget who it was, someone sent her money through Western Union. So I, said to Casey I was like wait hold on like let me look this place up because Nensa was able to get money sent to her from her family while she was in Portugal from like this company I forget what it's called so I like had to look it up and I like was searching through everything and then I found it and I was like Western Union there's three in Rome the closest one was a three stop metro and I was like I really don't want to go back on the metro but like that would have been like an hour and a half walk like it was so ridiculous and I was like okay I found one it's kind of far away and she was like I just need money at this point so yeah let's do it like let's just take the risk and do it because I don't have anything to lose so we called her mom I literally had never heard of Western Union before turns out it was like a big thing before like Venmo and that kind of stuff where you could like send people cash if they needed it so her mom was like duh western union like let's do it so she made an account on western union she put in casey's 
information and everything. And we were gonna go to Western Union. So we get on the Metro and I was so nervous. I had this rain jacket because it was kind of cold. So I put on a sweatshirt and then I put on this rain jacket over top and the rain jacket had a normal pocket and then it had a Velcro pocket. Um, so I took the Velcro pocket and I put my like fanny pack thing. I used it as a wallet the whole time. So I put it into the Velcro thing and I had my hands in my normal pocket and I was like holding onto the stuff in my Velcro pocket. <laughs> Cause I was just like so nervous. So we get on the Metro, we get off the Metro and then we walk to the Western Union and the lady who worked there, she was very nice, but she did not speak a single word of English. And we were like trying to explain to her that we were trying to pick up money. But I think she thought that we were trying to take out money, like it was like a bank. So we just kept trying to like explain it to her. And then she was like, no, no, like it's down the corner. And I was like, okay. So we walked around the corner and I was like, I don't think that's right. Like, I'm pretty sure that's the place. Like, it's just like a place with like a booth. And then you go in and tell them your name and that that's that so we went back and i decided i was like okay let's try google translate because maybe that will work i'm not sure we'll just try it because i know google translate's like kind of iffy but um i think everyone knows that google translate's a little iffy so we didn't speak italian the woman didn't speak any english so i was like let's just try it at least it's something at least it's words that she will understand she can probably pick piece it together and that's usually what I did whenever I went to a different country that didn't speak English um, unless it was the Netherlands because everyone there speaks like really good English so I pull out my phone and I was like I typed I think I typed in we're here to pick up a money transfer or something for and then I put Casey's name once I like showed her my phone and was like that like this is why we're here she was like oh oh okay and then she put in Casey's name, she got out the money, and it was fine. We got all the money. I think it was like 250 euros. It was like, a, it was what she had in her wallet, so it was enough. But yeah, so her mom sent her the money. We got back to the hostel, no problem. I took the longest shower that night. I was like, I can't. I was so disgusted, and I didn't ever want to wear that sweater ever again. I was like, that man, that greasy ass man, touched my stuff it was just a very stressful day so the next day we actually decided to splurge and pay the two euros and just use the hostels lockers because we were not taking that chance again it was just it was horrible the next day we went to the vatican so we had to take the metro because it was so far but everything else we walked i personally never want to go back to rome don't hate me i know that's like a very privileged thing to say i know a lot of people can't go to rome or europe in general like i know that it's like very expensive to do those things and i was very lucky to be able to study abroad and go there i had a good time but i don't need to be going back i've seen everything i wanted to see experienced everything that rome has to offer and i just don't see the need to go back i don't have a desire to go back but yeah so if you're ever traveling i know we can't travel right now but if you're ever traveling and people say that there are pickpockets there, please listen to them. I know in London they say that there's lots of pickpockets. I never encountered anything that like sketched me out, but I think after spring break I was very cautious about everything. So just be cautious. Like, make sure you know where your stuff is all the time. Don't wear backpacks. If you're gonna wear a backpack, make sure it's like a decoy or something. Like don't put anything valuable in there. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Like don't really have your phone out. I heard a story actually of a girl who was out on a night out in Rome with her friends and she was on her phone trying to find the way home and some guy ran up to her and just snatched the phone right out of her hand and ran off with it. So don't do that either. Like if you're gonna check your phone, do it inside somewhere. That's why we called people when we were in the pharmacy. If there's a large crowd on the metro or if there's like street dancers, be careful and make sure you have all your stuff because that's like a distraction and pickpocketers will target that because like they'll target people in crowds like that because they're distracted, they're watching someone dancing. Oh, when Casey got her wallet stolen, she said that she felt someone touch her like back pocket she was thinking in her head oh thank god i don't have anything in my back pocket but that's like a tactic that pickpocketers use 
so they'll touch like your back pocket or like your shoulder or something so that you pay attention to that and not where they're actually stealing from you so they touched her back pocket but they stole with the other hand as they were touching her back pocket but yeah watch out for that in crowds i guess that's the end of this video thank you for watching if you did i know this is like long and rambly but like i just thought might as well because there's nothing else to do i hope you guys enjoyed watching if you actually got to this point thank you and i guess i'll see you next time bye i like love this look so much and i'm keeping it for the next video too so i'm literally filming two videos today sorry not sorry i'm gonna change my outfit but i'm not gonna change my makeup because it looks so good <laughs> all right peace out